In an effort to not light yourself up with electricity, there's a couple of basic things you want to be prepared to do just to be safe. The first thing, the most obvious thing, is that if you're using an extension cord, uh, extension cords in water don't mix. That's all there is to it. So if you're going to drag it across a puddle or you're going to leave where you're plugged in, lying in a puddle somewhere, someone somewhere is going to get shocked from that. So just remember electrical cords, extension cords, and water don't mix. The other thing you need to remember is once an extension cord has been nicked or the insula insulation has been damaged, the uh, opportunity to get shocked has gone up dramatically. Um, the other thing is I don't keep cords where I've had to replace an end. Um, if I've had to cut off an end, it got cut off with a, using a saw on a table, you know, a set of saw horses, whatever those things are called. If, while using a circular saw on some saw horses, the end of a cord got cut off, you can certainly go buy a replacement end for it and tape it up as good as you want. I don't trust that when it's my safety that's at stake. So I'll get rid of an extension cord at that point and just buy a new one. So no water. Um, don't try and repair them. Just replace them. And uh, you should be safe that way. I think at some point in the future, I've got to show myself how to wrap them that way. That's just cool. The other thing you want to do you have your, in your house these things called GFI circuits, ground fault interrupt circuits. Now those are the special push button outlets that you find in bathrooms and kitchens. They're designed to constantly monitor the hot and neutral lines to make sure that there's no variance in voltage, which would signal a short circuit that could shock you. Um, this tester right here, they're just a few dollars, and it allows you to manually test and make sure that GFI is working properly. You can push the test button and that tells you that it's mechanically working right, but this device actually shorts it out to make sure it's working properly. So this is a, a small investment to make sure your GFIs are working great. About 30% of the GFIs I test do not operate properly. That's why it's a big deal. Now, this guy here is called a volt tick. You'll see the light come on. As long as I'm holding this down, it will detect electricity even through the insulation of wiring. Um, and it's got a narrow blade on it so you can fit it into the outlet. We use these to test and make sure that the electricity is in fact turned off before working on an electrical outlet or a device of some kind. It only takes a moment. Uh, so they're a great device. This book is one of many on the market. It's one of the most common. It's readily available at all the big box stores, uh, at least in my area. And it's got anything you could want to know about electrical work inside it. Um, including some basic safety procedures, how to make sure you don't have a branch of circuits that's overloaded, some of those sort of things. Find yourself a good electrical services guidebook and uh, just get to know where to find this stuff in it to make sure you're doing these things properly. Turning off a breaker isn't enough without a volt tick to make sure your voltage is off. Regular everyday use of GFIs could really be made safer by testing them on rare occasion and don't drag your electrical cords through water or reuse ones that have been damaged. It's just not worth it. Let's be safe. <laughs>